Chapter 3 Programming for the Web Now that our local development environment has been set up and verified, we can have a look at some actual examples of PHP scripts. In this chapter, we'll see how there's really not a lot of difference between HTML files and PHP files. Then we'll show you how projects can be divided into multiple files. Throughout the examples, make sure to pay attention to the separation of static template HTML and the dynamic PHP code we're introducing. We'll begin this chapter by starting Eclipse and opening example1.php. We had a quick look at example1 in the last chapter. If you're familiar with HTML, you'll recognize the syntax in this file. There's only one thing here that you may not yet be familiar with, and that has to do with the file extension PHP. Other than that, it's a simple HTML file and also a PHP script. Let's have a look at a slightly different version. Open example2.php. There are two important changes to this file that we want to point out. The first is that we've added a line near the start. This line uses a built-in PHP function called require to indicate that the contents of another PHP script called verbgenerator.php are required for this script to work properly. If this other file didn't exist, PHP would report an error when the script is processed. For now, we're not going to focus on this other file, but we will revisit it later to explain how everything comes together. The second change to point out is this additional PHP code within the existing HTML block. This section, or tag, is processed by the web server and everything shown here is replaced by the result of that processing. So what happens when we request this script with our browser? Have a look. If you refresh the page a few times, you'll see that verb changes between dynamic, simple, and short. All of these definitely being qualities of this script. Looking back at the code for this example, there are some very important concepts to understand about PHP programming before we move on to more useful examples. The opening angle bracket, or less than sign, followed by a question mark and PHP, is a special symbol combination that's interpreted by the web server. Everything between this and the question mark and closing angle bracket, or greater than sign, is interpreted as PHP code rather than regular HTML. In this example, we've used static HTML to create a template for the dynamic content, in this case, the verb generated by the PHP code. This way, we can easily mix static layout with dynamic content. There are times, however, when the template approach used here isn't the best fit. Let's have a look at verbgenerator.php, which does most of the work for this example. The structure of this file is different, as it doesn't contain any HTML. Notice as well the special tags at the beginning and end of the file to tell the web server that everything here is PHP code. When writing a block of PHP code, every statement needs to have a semicolon after it. Although it isn't syntactically necessary, it's the best practice to put each statement on a separate line. This ensures the best readability of your code when, not if, you or somebody else has to change the code later on. When a PHP block only contains one statement, you can leave off the semicolon. Let's review what was covered in this chapter. We learned that PHP files have a .php extension but can also contain HTML tags. We also saw how the built-in function require is used to divide a script into separate logical pieces. We looked at the special tags that are required to indicate to the web server that PHP code is to be processed. And finally, we learned that semicolons are required at the end of every statement unless there's only one statement in a PHP block. <laughs>